Good evening, Natural Science. We're going to start by going over Chapter 16. We've got some formulas here. We'll go over and introduce the problems and also go over the book work here. Chapter 16 is electrical charge. Kind of a neat thing there. Um, I'll send the, you can go on my page for... And Chapter 16 starts on page 530. You can go on my page to um, find the definitions of the Quizlets, and I'll get those to you later. Um, basically, here's a big thing starting there. Conductors allow charge, insulators do not. So things like conductors would be like metals where current can move freely through. Or things are like insulators, like rubber gloves that withstand current. Uh, that do not allow the current to transfer easily. Rubber gloves, wood are good insulators. And things like metals, uh, pool water are good conductors. Um, so, of course, when they're working on the power lines, they put these big, thick rubber gloves on to protect them to make sure they do that as we go through there. And of course, remember, you're supposed to read the book as well. Electric works on a field. An electric field is a region in space where the charged are particles, um, objects, cause a stationary object to experience an electric force. So again, you typically, typically like these negative and positive field lines that go through there to make the electric field and electric charge go across areas. Now the next thing is called voltage and current. Voltage and current is what we're gonna go over next. Oh, you've seen one of these before, probably a battery. You got a positive and a negative ter terminal. And I'll tell you the truth, every season this year, I have to jump our lawnmower. I have to charge it on our battery charger. So I have to hook the positive and the negative terminals up to the battery char charger, red and the black there, of course. Um, the negative terminal is black and the positive terminal is red. I hook them up, jump it. It starts to work. Typically, by the end of the season, the battery is, is, is good to go. I need to put a new battery in, but um, just trying to get the last little bit out of that last one there. And that's commonly called a 12-volt cell, which is typically for a, a car battery. A small battery is 1.5 volts, 12 volts for a car battery. Um, 9 volts, little square ones you find in, uh, like, your smoke detectors. Uh, most of the other ones are one and a half volts that you'll find in your electrical devices, your remotes, and so forth. Resistance is the thing that opposes the motion of material to the flow of current. And we have things that are good resistors and poor resistors. Um, and that was really a big part of inviting the incandescent light bulb here. Um, if you ever watch the movie or the shows about how they invented it, getting that filament to allow the current to flow through <clears throat> and getting the right materials was the key in developing that light bulb, which, of course, nowadays we don't even use incandescent bulbs anymore. You can't even buy them in the store. All right, first equation we'll have, we'll go over some problems here in a second, is resistance, which is R, equals voltage over current. And I got this little chart here for the notes here. Current is in amps, which is a capital letter A. Power is in watts, which we've done before. Voltage is in volts, and resistance is in ohms. And it's this little, almost like an upside down U looking character. There's the official one in the book right there, where you see the resistances, the ohms. So we'll go through a few problems. We'll work number one out here for the thing. Find the resistance of a portable lantern that uses 24 volts of power and draws a current of 8 amps. So the formula is going to be R equals V over I. And we said it was 24 volts of power. So 24 volts over 0.8 amps. So we grab our calculator and we take 24 divided by 0 0.8 and we get 30 ohms as our answer. All right. Let's do number four. 
A 1.5 volt battery is connected to the small light bulb with a resistance of 3.5 ohms. What is the current of the bulb? So the current is going to be the I. I equals V over R. I gave you all the variations. R equals V over I. That is an I there, folks, not a T. V equals I, over, I times R, and I equals V over R. So again, this one, if we're going to try to find the current, it's going to be I equals V over I, R. So I equals V over R. We said it was 1.5 volts divided by 3.5 ohms. Punch that in. 1.5 divided by 3.5, 0. 0.43 amps. Now, amps are what can be fatal. Amps are what kill a person. So we have to be very careful with the amperage that we have uh, with that. And of course, we know electricity can be very, very dangerous. So we just wanna watch the high amps. Now, of course, the power companies have signs that say danger high voltage, but uh, uh, many times it's the amps that are what can be dangerous to kill a person when they come in contact with electricity. Next thing is a material called a semiconductor. A semiconductor is a class of material that <clears throat> can conduct electricity at certain temperatures. And semiconductors are f f filled in these little motherboards, right? You can see right here. If you pull any electronic device apart, you'll see one of these. And semiconductors have revolutionized what we can do uh, with electronics. All right. Next are circuits. A circuit. Like there's an example of a circuit right there. Simple putting a lantern battery, connecting it with some clips there to light a light bulb up. You can add a thing like a switch here. And if you open the switch up, the circuit's open. If you close it, it's, it's closed and it connects. That's how your light switches in your houses work in a much more complicated manner. You're basically, every time you flip the switch, you're closing a circuit or opening a circuit. And here's what we do with the schematic diagram with that. We take and we have diagrams to replace things to draw them out. Now, here are the terms. For example, there's a wire, a resistor, a bulb or a lamp, a battery, and a switch, open or closed. And that's how we do it when representing schematic diagrams. Now we can have two types of circuits. We can have what's called series, where the components form a single path or parallel, where the components are connected side by side. And the best way to think about the difference between series and parallel is think about Christmas light bulbs. If you have a Christmas light bulb that's in series, if one bulb goes out, the entire strand will not work. So therefore, the strand will not work if it's connected by series, which those are typically the most inexpensive ones. Kind of what I consider to be the disposable light bulbs. So if they're disposable like that, um, one goes out, you just throw the whole strand away. Your house, though, is going to be typically wired in parallel. So if one light bulb and your fixture or your, your recessed lighting in your kitchen goes out, the whole series, the whole, the whole bulbs will not all go out. Only that one light bulb will go out. And that's typically how they are, are wired at a house. You don't find much uh, series wiring anymore. But when they first were doing electricity, many times things were wired in series. All right, now the next equation we're gonna go over is power. Power equals current times voltage. Power is expressed in watts, voltage V, current in amps. And of course, there's the formulas. Power equals I times V. I equals P over V. And of course, then um, 
V would equal P over I as well. And here's a com combination formula. If you get a little more complicated, you can use I squared times R equals V squared over R. And those all equal power. So let's try a couple problems here. Two so number one. An electric space heater requires 29 amps and 120 volts of current to adequately warm a room. What is the power rating of the heater? Power equals I times V. It said the I was 29 amps. The V was 120 volts. So we're going to take 29 times 120. 3,480 watts. Three thousand four hundred and eighty watts, or three point four kilowatts. Remember a light bulb. Originally, the incandescents were sixty watts, forty watts typically. Most of them were sixty. Now, of course, if you replace them with LEDs, they're usually running about ten watts of power, but they give off the same brightness. All right, let's try another one. Let's do number five. The current in a heating element of electricity is electric iron is 5 amps. If the iron displaces 590 watts of power, what is the voltage across it? So volts will equal power over <clears throat> the current. Voltage equals power over current. So it's going to equal 590 watts over 5.0 amps, 590 divided by 5 equals 118 volts. Now, your typical plugs in your house are going to be 120 volts. You might have a 240, which would be like your oven or your stove or potentially your dryer would run on a 240 in your house. Uh, the electric company, as you should be well aware of, uses kilowatt hours to measure the energy uh, that is consumed. And of course, that's how you get billed by kilowatt hours, the amount of kilowatts that go through an hour. And a kilowatt is 1,000 watts. And the last thing I think we're gonna go over this chapter is the difference between a fuse and a circuit breaker. Most people anymore don't have fuses, but of course you've heard the term blow a fuse that's exactly what a fuse used to do. If you overloaded a circuit, you would blow a fuse and it literally would pop and you'd have to screw the fuse out and put a new fuse in. Where now they've mostly been replaced in more modern homes with what's called a circuit breaker. Or basically the breaker trips on a panel and you flip the breaker back. So if you do something like decide you're gonna run the microwave, put a curling iron on, a hair dryer, all on the same circuit, that's pulling through there a lot of power, you might pop it, pop one circuit because too much current is flowing through that area. And here's what a schematic diagram looks like. I'll put upload some YouTube videos that'll show you that in a little bit. Remember, you got the assignment to work on. Again, the formulas, P equals I over V, I equals P over V, and of course, V will equal P over I. R equals V over I, V equals I times R. I equals V over R. I is current, P is power, V is volts, R is resistance in ohms, A, W, and V. I'll write that down there too, V, W, and A for the units. All right, keep getting that work done, guys. Have a great day.